Question 4 from the 2019 Higher Physics Exam Section 2 from the SQA. A communication satellite orbits the Earth at a height of 36.0 times 10 to the power 6 metres above the surface of the Earth. The mass of the Earth is given as 6.0 times 10 to the power 24 kilograms and the radius of the Earth is given as 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 metres. Now we are asked in part A to determine the distance between the centre of the Earth and the satellite. So that's really the distance between here the centre of the Earth, and a way out here to the, the height of the satellite. So we have to add on the radius to that then. So we know that the radius is from here to there. And we'll call that the radius of the Earth, Re. That's the radius of the Earth. And this distance here, 36.0 times 10 to 6, we'll call that the height of the satellite is above. So the distance between the centre of the Earth and the height of the satellite we're going to call that R. So R is going to be the distance, just tell the examiner, R is going to be the distance between the centre of the Earth, between the centre of the Earth and the satellite. Centre of Earth and the satellite. And that's the R that's going to be used when we work out the gravitational force of attraction between two objects. We always take it from the centre. So R is the distance between the centre of the Earth and the satellite. And the satellite as shown there, satellite. We can write a wee equation out for it. R has got to be equal to the radius of the Earth plus the height the satellite is at. So we plug in the numbers, the radius of the Earth is 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 of a metre, 10 to the 6 metres. And we're going to add on to that the height of the satellite is above, which is 36 times 10 to the power 6 metres. So the distance between the centre of the Earth and the satellite, if you work that in your calculator, you get an answer of 42.4 times 10 to the power 6 of a metre, 10 to 6 metres. So that's the distance from the centre of the Earth right out to the satellite. And that's the value of R we have to use when working out the gravitational force of attraction between the Earth and the satellite, which is going to be part B. Question 4, part B. The gravitational force of attraction between the Earth and the satellite is 57 newtons. Calculate the mass of the satellite. Well, we know if we've got the Earth here, and we have the satellite out here and we know we've got capital M for the mass of the Earth and let small m be the mass of the satellite and we know that the distance between the centre of the Earth all the way out here to the satellite we've just worked out previously that's the distance R and we found out that R was 42.4 times 10 to the power 6 metres in the previous question. We can work out the gravitational force of attraction between the satellite and the Earth by using the formula up here. So we know the formula F is equal to the gravitational force of attraction F equals G, the universal gravitational constant. And we just multiply the two masses together, small m times big M, and divide that by the distance from the centres of each of the objects. Now, we are, you've been told that the gravitational force of attraction is 57 newtons, and we're asked to find what the mass of the satellite is. We're asked to find small m. So to unlock that from the equation, we have to rearrange, first of all. So if we cross-multiply, we're going to end up with f times r squared, and that's going to equal to the universal gravitational constant times uh, small m, times capital M. We're still after that small m, so we divide each side by gm, and we have f r squared divided by gm, and that's going to give us the mass of the satellite. So we also know that the gravitational, we can put the numbers in now, uh, we know that the gravitational, universal gravitational constant g is going to have a value of 6.67 times 10 to minus 11, it's got horrendous units, metres cubed, uh, kilograms to minus 1, and a second to the minus 2. So it's got really quite a, a complicated unit, so don't worry about that. But we know the value from G just by looking it up. So what we have to do now is plug in the numbers, M equals F, which is the 57 newtons, 
multiplied by r squared. Don't forget it's r squared. And from the previous question, we found out that was 42.4 times 10 to the power 6 uh, metres. And we have to square all that together. Divided that all by the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to minus 11, leave the units out there now, multiplied by, in this case, we multiply it by m, the mass of the Earth, which we found out from the information was 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. We'll put a bracket around that as well. So do that in your calculator, be very careful. And we end up with a mass equal to... 256 kilograms. Now we can put that to two significant figures. We can call that 260 kilograms to two significant figures. Just beware of the square part here. You have to be very careful from that. But it's a straightforward calculation and rearrangement, and that should give you the answer for 4 part B. Question 4 part C. Determine the value of the Earth's gravitational field strength, G, at the satellite. So here's our diagram again. We have the Earth, we have the satellite, and the satellite is going to experience a gravitational force of attraction towards the Earth, which we called capital F. Now, that actually is equal to the weight of the satellite, because the weight of any object is really the gravitational force of attraction which is acting on it. So that's the key point in this question. It seems to confuse a lot of people. The gravitational force acting on an object of mass m is the weight of the object. The gravitational force acting on an object of mass m is the weight of the object. And we know that the weight of an object is equal to the mass times its gravitational field strength at that particular point in the field. So W equals mg. So what we're asked to find out then is we're asked to find out what G is at the satellite. So G, if we rearrange, is going to give us W divided by the mass. And we'd previously worked out the gravitational force of attraction, which is the weight, was actually 57 newtons. So we can put in 57 newtons there. And divide by the mass of the satellite, which we calculated to be 260 kilograms to two significant figures. So we work that out, we get an answer of 57 divided by 260 is 0 0.22 newtons per kilogram. So that's the gravitational field strength out at the satellite. Of course, if the satellite was placed on the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field strength would be 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So the further we go out, away from the planet, the gravitational field strength which is the weight per unit mass decreases. So that's our answer to question 4C. Question 4, part D. A second satellite has a quarter of the mass of the first satellite. The distance from the centre of the Earth to the second satellite is half the distance from the centre of the Earth to the first satellite. State how the gravitational force of attraction between the second satellite and the Earth compares with the gravitational force of attraction between the first satellite and the Earth. And you've got to justify your answer. Now, there's a lot of things going on here. I have to be very careful. I like to start off with a diagram of the situation. We can see that the first satellite, M, is a distance R from the centre of the Earth. And that's going to be, be that's going to have a force of attraction, F, equal to G, small m, big m, over r squared. But look at the second satellite. It's only half the distance from the centre of the Earth, and it's only got a quarter of the mass. So it's going to have a new gravitational force of attraction, a different one. And we can work it out by putting in the numbers. But you can see the mass of the satellite I've written as one quarter m. And the distance from the centre of the Earth I've written as one half r, because that's what I'm told in the sentences above. So all I've got to do is put in F dash, the new gravitational force of attraction, and put the new data in. G stays the same, but the small ma the mass of the small satellite is going to be one quarter of it. So I'm going to multiply that by one quarter times M. So one quarter times M. And of course we're going to have times big M at the top. Divided by 
R squared. Now, R squared is going to this time become a half R. But remember, I've got to square it. Now, I've got some numbers in here, so I want to keep all the numbers to one side. So, if I put down the new gravitational force of attraction is, and take the quarter and put it in here, and then just say G, small m, big m, and divide that by, now, the half r squared is going to become one quarter r squared, because one half times a half is a quarter. So, I'm going to have one quarter r squared. Now, if you look very closely at F dashed, the new gravitational force of attraction, you can see that the quarter on the top and the quarter on the bottom are going to disappear. So we can actually score those out. And we're left with F dashed equals G small m big m over r squared, which is exactly equal to the force which is experienced by the first satellite. So really, what's happening here is going to be no change in the force. No change in the force. That's going to be your statement. No change in the gravitational force. No change in the gravitational force. And there is your reasoning, which appears in this side here. So when you're doing these questions, it's always better just to put in the numbers and then take the numbers to one side and then see if something cancels out. You've got to be very extra vigilant when you get to a half R all squared because people forget that. One half squared is a quarter and that goes there. And then, of course, the two cancel out. And you have the exactly the same expression as F, the original gravitational force of attraction. So there's no change in the gravitational force of attraction.